from the makers of XQC Slam Desk Fart. In conjunction with Champions Club Productions, presents a streamer like no other. You fine ass, cute accented woman, mm mm, good lord. Oh yeah, bring extra panties cause you'll need them. Meet one of Twitch's biggest streamers. He provides an astonishing lack of actual content. And of course, we can't forget the uncaged incel rants. These girls that rejected us, Twitch is high school all over again. The same sluts that rejected us, the same sluts. Say no more to these goddamn using women. Uh, he used to come into my stream all the time, constantly telling me I was so hot and asking, when are you going to be my girlfriend? Even though I'd clearly told him, no, not going to happen. Trainwrecks TV, sex, <laughs> drugs, I do coke, and excruciatingly long intros. True and, yeah, that's pretty true. That's true. And, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. I mean, that's when you get this fucking intro over, oh my <laughs> fucking god, you just go faster. Have you ever wondered just how much talent is required to be a top Twitch streamer? Well, apparently not a lot. All you need is to strip away any shred of morality left in you, be a fake leech, and pander to an audience of confused, horny teenagers. And no, I'm not calling out so-called Twitch thoughts. See. Train is eerily similar to the supposed using women of Twitch that he often complains about. Goddamn using women! There's a lot to talk about when it comes to Train. I think the aspect of him that's most intriguing and probably most famous is what he says about women. And I will get to that. But first, I think it's important to get a little bit more of an understanding of who Trainwrecks the streamer is and the kind of audience he cultivates. Cultivate being a very appropriate word, because you can't spell it without cult. So Train has this weird shtick where he almost resembles like a cult leader. And you know what? That would be really funny. But then you start to realize he's being completely unironic. I am the goddamn light. I am the goddamn savior. I am the leader. I'm coming. I'm going to change the fucking world. I'm going to fucking lead you with me. If you listen to him speak, he often sounds like he's mimicking propagandist politicians. He emphasizes the importance of those within his in-group or community to a weird degree. And when he says community, he just means his fans and followers. He's constantly espousing how close they are, how great they are, how special they are. It's like Twitch's version of American exceptionalism. My community is so close knit. We are literally so close. We, it's like brothers and sisters that we are connected on an emotional level where we are a goddamn pact. We are a monkey pack. When I'm sitting there climbing and swinging on vines, they're climbing with me. Bitch, your stream consists of watching Gordon Ramsay in silence and opening CSGO cases. Stop trying to pretend like it's any more than that. You don't have a special community. Look, streamers, influencers of all kind can appreciate the audience they've cultivated and the community that they've built up. That's fine. But when you press on it this hard to this extent, and this isn't like a one-off thing. He does this incredibly often, more than anyone I've ever seen before in my 10 plus years of watching YouTube and Twitch. It's getting people in the community. It's long term. Next time we get into a battle or a war, these boys Twitch priming, sure, maybe not all of them return, but maybe next month one or two do. And we're two men, two gorillas more in the next war we face. And I know it's tempting to think that he's being ironic with all this, but no, he's not. When you're spouting what sounds like nationalistic propaganda about how they're like brothers, come on, you know what you're doing. He's trying to manufacture this feeling amongst his fans that they're a part of something much bigger than themselves and that it's really meaningful. Basically, it's a ploy used by influencers in the hopes that their audience succumb to an unhealthy parasocial relationship because it's much easier to squeeze those viewers for their time and money financing this guy's gambling addiction rather than doing something actually productive and meaningful because they think there'll be some payoff to being in this special community of brothers. And there won't be, because newsflash, these millionaire streamers are not your friends. You know what's funny? That this sort of rhetoric is often spewed by the people that have the least amount of actual engaging, substantial content. The only thing they have is their community. It's only special in so much that they say it is. But hey, if you have no valuable content to offer that people will pay for, just sell them the idea that you might be their friend. Like, we're so close, I love you. Buy my merch. I love you guys. Ape gang! Ape gang! Ape gang! Ape gang! Ape gang! Ape gang! Ape gang for life! I love you boys. Merch coming out soon. Ape gang. What a scam artist, dude. Shameless. You might say something like, oh, you're being so harsh by insinuating that he's so exploitative and stuff. Maybe he actually really loves his community. And I might be willing to accept that if Train didn't have a long history of being an incredibly fake person. 
like, did you slam out Kelsey or not? Yeah, no, I didn't slam out Kelsey. Yo, like, it's Mitch's girl, you know, I would never do that. I'm not like that. It's, it's not a squad thing to do, you know what I'm saying? Tyler was just playing this, like, act that he was, like, my friend, right? Kelsey came over and, but I, I don't know, I, like, walked in on them doing shit, right? It really just reassured me that Kelsey's a fucking thought and that Tyler was using me for fucking viewers. Yeah, nah, that's not a squad thing to do, bro. I ain't like that. I'm a real G. Alright, I'm getting deep into shit flinging drama territory right now, but stick with it. I'll get to his arguments about women soon enough. Train, or Tyler, has managed to fake friendship with famous streamers in order to exploit them for views multiple times at this point. From pretending to be friends with Mitch Jones, only to then stab him in the back, to inviting large streamers to his house under the pretense of a party just to start streaming as soon as they got into the house because they would bring in extra viewers. He got us to go in his car thinking we were going to a party. It was like a two and a half hour drive or something fucking retarded. By the time we got there, we were all sober. He, me, Raynad, Mitch, Trainwreck. <laughs> we get to his house and he turns his computer on and starts streaming and you could probably find this VOD somewhere. I was like, oh, this guy fucking sucks. This is the most negative, cynical, manipulative demonstration of the phrase fake it till you make it I have ever seen. He just fakes relationships with other streamers and with his own fans till he has so many sheep following him it doesn't even matter. And now that he's almost too big to fail, he can pretend to be a nice guy again. Train likes to play the victim a lot and he bemoans all the people that are unfairly against him. Like for example, the live stream fail subreddit and its moderators. I think the new live stream fail mods hate me, dude. It was me on Reddit. Dude, that shit was grinding up, dude. That shit was like at 7k upvotes and they fucking deleted it. They took it off Reddit. Like, is there someone just on the case? Like, is there a... Oh my God. Is there a Twitch staff working for live stream fail? What if there's one guy that's in both? You know what, it's funny that his mind went to such a conspiratorial place so quickly. Now, for context, LSF can be a really important subreddit for Twitch streamers, and a lot of popular clips are gathered there. And in some cases, it can even start or propel careers to new heights. And certainly it can influence the popular public narratives around streamers, depending on which way they're circle jerking. And the funny thing is, the moderators on there are unbelievably favorable towards train wrecks. If you go to a lot of threads where he's featured, the post is likely to be littered with comments that have been removed that were either criticizing him or posting something that shows him up in a negative light. And you will see way more malicious or egregiously cruel comments aimed at other streamers left up. And sometimes even pure speculation and unfounded rumors about other streamers will not be removed, but they almost always are in Train's case. You know, I swear it sometimes feels like some LSF mod must be in on it with Train. Maybe he moderates for his chat, you know? What if there's one guy that's in both? And this follows a history of negative things about Train Online either mysteriously disappearing or being silenced by a barrage of his fans. The links better steer clear. I'm gonna fuck that nigga up. You know what I'm saying? That nigga better steer clear. If he gives me a smirk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push him across the room. He's gonna know the strength of a god. He wants to call me an ape. We'll fucking see who's aping when he's swinging off the fucking walls. <laughs> fucking pussy. Now what you just saw there was Train threatening a YouTuber named Glink. Glink made an exposed video on Train and it was doing pretty well, it was well received. He then deleted the video. Now I don't know why he deleted it. Maybe he was intimidated, maybe he was paid off, maybe he just didn't like the video being up there, he thought it didn't suit his channel. I don't know, and it really doesn't matter. But what does matter, and what's unbelievable to me, is that the video no longer exists. And I don't just mean that it's no longer on Glink's channel. I mean, you cannot find it on the internet, re-uploaded anywhere. Like, that's crazy. Somehow a video with loads of views and with a lot of existing interest, and it's just been completely wiped off the face of the internet? That's not normal. Now, there is a video that harshly criticizes him that is still up on YouTube. It's a pretty fair video, most things considered, I think. And yet, it has an insane amount of dislikes. All the comments here about it being out of context are really weird. Like, there's no substance to them, no pointing out what part is actually out of context, no arguments. It's almost like none of these people actually watched the video, and they all came at once with instructions from a portion of the internet somewhere where trained fans reside en masse. Now, I'm not saying that Train and his fans brigaded this video, spammed it with negative comments and dislikes in order to limit its reach and psychologically manipulate new viewers of the video into dismissing its validity. I'm not saying that. It might be true, and I might be thinking it, but I'm not saying that's what happened. Train has an extensive and weird history of interacting with women, from passive-aggressive comments in video games to his egregiously thirsty messages. What? You shouldn't. You should make a Twitter and follow both of us. And uh, I'm introducing my yes. girlfriend. 
And it'll be me and my girlfriend and you and Poke. What do you mean no? Are you one of those girls are you one of those girls with cute voices but bigger bodies? What the fuck? Sorry to my Don't friend. Worry. He's you know. Oh. Hey Ashley, can you please fucking heal? We get it, you wanna fucking act like you're equal and all that bullshit. What the fuck? What the You know what the fuck dude? Like women or men are already equal. Some women have these like chip on their shoulders where they have to prove they're equal so they play DPS on purpose and they throw games. <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? Oh my god. What if that's oh not god, the case? Just playing fucking Widow. So Train has axiomatically decided here that if you're a woman playing damage and he doesn't like how you're playing, then it's because you have some sort of womanly chip on your shoulder where you feel like you need to prove yourself. You know, it couldn't just be that you enjoy playing damage like basically every other Overwatch player. The most damning part about this is Train has revealed himself to be one of those dipshit Overwatch players who instantly starts blaming DPS anytime something in the game isn't going right for them. Them. Like, I've seen him play. He's a gold player at best who gets carried by more talented friends like Pokelols. Don't be that guy. Okay, I'm gonna stop there because there's loads of these and there might be loads more that I haven't come across. But I think you guys probably get the idea. Horny man tries to proposition female Twitch streamers. Now, in all honesty, even though these are kind of cringy, I don't really really have an issue with people trying to quest people online or slide into DMs or send lewd and thirsty messages. And we've all probably said some cringe shit online over the years. The issue that arises with this sort of thing is when it becomes clear that the person on the other end doesn't reciprocate or feel comfortable with these messages. Once it's revealed that such behavior is overstepping personal boundaries and Train continues to engage in it, that's when it becomes a problem and potential harassment. Now as I showed before, there are pretty clear indications of streamers signaling that they don't feel entirely comfortable with Train's messages. Now there's something deeper that drives this sort of creepy harassing behavior. And if you're a somewhat regular watcher of Twitch, you've probably come across remnants of the ideology known as Squad Fucking W. If you are a subscriber to Train's Twitch channel, you get access to his emotes. One such emote is a close-up of his face, which you can use in chat by typing the phrase Squad W. Typically in Twitch circles, Squad W has been memified into a representation of negative views towards women. It is sometimes used ironically, and sometimes it's not. Some of the ways it's used include when a female streamer behaves in ways that are viewed as sexually exploitative, and this might lead to someone in chat typing out, shameless Squad W. When a woman says something the chat disapproves of and someone else on stream starts arguing against her, they might say, destroy her ego, squad W, or hit her, squad W. <laughs> it is generally also used to embody ideas of inseldom and general misogyny. Now, Train claims that squad W is just about double standards, that it has nothing to do with gender or females, but everyone, including his own fans, knows that's bullshit. The most common thing that Train complains about and is the embodiment of squad W are streamers who show off their bodies or wear revealing clothing or in any way display behaviors that can be perceived as highly sexualized in order to garner subs or donations or viewers or whatever. He argues that if you sexualize yourself in this manner then you should not complain when someone makes sexual remarks or comments on it. That you should understand that along with the donations or higher viewership that sexual comments are just something that comes along with your behavior and you should accept it as such. So if you complain about objectification after then that is some double standard squad W. Do you see me shaking my ass or fucking taking my tits out? Fuck no. I don't go on Twitter and fucking clip it and try and call you a sexist or misogynist or objectifying pig. He condensed a lot of his views in a discussion with Destiny recently. I don't like that they want to bake the cake and they want to eat the cake. They want to do sexualized content and then when you make a comment on it, you're a sexist and misogynist. I don't like that. When you want to sit there and do something to gain all the good and then one bad happens and you don't want to sit there and say, okay, you know what, what I'm doing is kind of on the edge. It's going to attract a little bit of this. A little bit of this being what? Harassing messages? Instead of owning it and accepting it and accepting the consequence, I want to sit here and play the high road. I want to grandstand and say, no, this guy's a sexist and a misogynist for even looking. Yeah, I wonder what his definition of just looking is. Yeah, not like we have a history of his behavior basically cataloged for us. I was just looking bros, I swear, and she blocked me, what the fuck? Also, when you use the words accept the consequences, that looks really bad. 
instead of owning it and accepting it and accepting the consequence. Because you sound like you're basically one step away from doing the, well, if she didn't want to get raped, she shouldn't have worn those short skirts argument. Accept the consequences. All right, so Destiny starts to push back on the idea that there's this big contingent of streamers that complain about their viewers for even looking at them. I don't think anybody has ever said that anybody is like a sexist or a misogynist person just for looking. I think the problems usually come when we start getting... I think that generally the problem is when people... No, I think it's problems when people start sending harassing messages or when people start acting crazy in chat. I don't think any Twitch streamer, I could be wrong, but I don't think any girl streamers remember like, I hate it when there are guys that look at me sexually in chat. Like, that's not usually what happens. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. I have never in my life seen that complaint. Yes, I, I have never this, seen it. I would be I shocked if I ever saw a clip that was shown that shows somebody doing it. I Pretty think. much the general. So in this conversation, Train doesn't provide a single clip of a streamer doing this, nor does he provide the name of any streamers who are supposedly guilty. You'd think that when these complaints are such a big portion of your brand, you'd at least have one or two examples stored away. And yet he's throwing it out there that this is like a really big issue on Twitch. Not only have I never heard this take before, I'm positive that no no big uh, female streamers ever given that take before. There's no possible way. I have never said big female streamers. Wait, so then who's saying this? That it's so important to bring up some random no name shitter? Why uh, even bother bringing it, it up it, then? It, it could it could be a man or a woman. It doesn't matter who it is. The gender doesn't matter, huh? These girls like come back into our streaming community with the same goddamn stories, with the same goddamn fucking pity shit, with their titties out, with their pussies out, with their goddamn motherfucking yoga pants on, with their asses squatting, with their motherfucking tits in their faces asking for donations donation goals are fucking bullshit their pussies open using people manipulating people i am the goddamn light i am the goddamn savior no more say no more to these goddamn using women yeah definitely not about women though what a weasley fucking liar dude anytime he's confronted train tries to weasel out of the things he has actually said and basically tell boldface lies from oh it's not just girls the gender doesn't matter to oh i never said it was a big issue it's not a huge thing that the general population does and that's why i've multiple times said that what i'm referring to in my speech and what i talk about and why uh, it's not like sexist. It's a small percentage. I've always, always in my rants and speeches have said, I'm referring to the 1%. Tonight, we fucking take this goddamn website back from these boring shit names, from these cucks, from these girls that use us. We take it back. Yeah, take it back as though it's been run over or controlled pretty clearly implies more than 1% their dipshit. And also, I've watched quite a few of the rants. I've never seen him mention one percent like really weaselly now when you say like oh like this is a big problem like people complain about this or that or that blah 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 blah. this is a huge thing and it I'm like well who problem. says that wait, wait but then i say well like who actually says this and you're like well nobody big nobody important it's like okay well i can well, find I mean, anybody no, no, no. saying literally anything to clarify to clarify i didn't want to say anyone big or anyone important because i don't want to get specific with names he's so weaselly just own up to your beliefs you coward so apparently it is like a big problem again that one percent thing went away real quick apparently some big streamers do engage in this but he doesn't want to say any specific names for some reason well i mean if they and say this you can get specific like to a stream nope i can't get specific what are you talking about okay what about the smaller streamers any clips tweets anything nope this is all sounding very convenient almost like it's a problem he has made up in his head Okay, anyway, I think this is a good moment to talk about the difference between sexualization and objectification, because the ambiguity there seems to be where a lot of the issues lie. Alright, let's say I'm out and about, and uh, I, see a, I see a girl with a nice cleavage showing, alright? It's completely fine if I think to myself, mm-mm, look at them titties. And you know what? It's also completely fine if I go up to her and try to strike up a conversation or start flirting. Okay, now that is an example of me sexualizing someone, because I thought about them in a sexual manner or in a sexual context. It could also be an example of them sexualizing themselves, because maybe they intentionally dressed in a sexy way or a provocative way. And there's nothing wrong with either of these things. But if I think that just because of my attraction to this person that they owe me anything or if they make it clear that they don't like my behavior and I press on that is indicative of an objectifying thought process that I do not respect this person as a as an equal human being quite simply objectification is viewing a person as nothing other than an object for your sexual pleasure bypassing all inclinations of their desires and their autonomy and making your attraction to them their issue it's really not that hard, and I think most people understand this fairly intuitively. But of course, a dipshit like Train doesn't. And he basically implicitly says that harassment is 
fine and that they bring it on themselves because they sexualize themselves. Now keep in mind, he will never explicitly say that, at least not quite in those terms, but in essence it is very much what he is actually saying. And he thinks that loads of women are just like, Ugh, don't even look at me. Or they get mad if you say something innocuous. That typically isn't how things go down. Most people are fairly reasonable. But then again, Train does seem like the kind of person who lays it on pretty thick and like he's socially inept or some shit. And when girls don't respond to that well, he gets pissed. Wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. Okay, I'll summarize the key takeaways for Train and his stupider fans, okay? Just because a streamer chooses to sexualize themselves and even capitalize and profit off of that, you can think that they're untalented, you can think they're lazy, you can think their content doesn't belong on Twitch. But it does not mean that they deserve to get harassed or that they have it coming to them. Or that they shouldn't complain when people cross established boundaries. Also, I said it was okay to think that sexualized content doesn't belong on Twitch. But when you harp on it this much and this hard like Train does, it really makes you wonder where his motivations lie. It seems pretty obvious to me that Train just doesn't like that girls can be successful on Twitch and in some cases in large part because of their looks or their sexual behavior or whatever. And he's unwilling willing to admit that it annoys him because he's an insecure baby with no real content of his own. Also, I don't think it's that crazy for me to suggest, given his history with women, that he feels some sort of entitlement and he resents people when his feelings aren't reciprocated. Getting a bit into uh, armchair psychology here, but eh, fuck him, seems pretty obvious to me. So in conclusion, fuck train wrecks. This is probably the most degenerate, drama, shit-flinging, hit piece kind of video I've ever, I've ever made. And usually I like to make clear that, you know, the person I'm making a video on that I don't think they're a bad person or that I'm very specifically only criticizing certain aspects about them. And usually I don't begrudge people like their viewership or their success or anything. But in this case, nah. Uh, Train is untalented, he's a leech, he's fake, he's harmful, he's exploitative, he's a disingenuous, pandering, dumb piece of shit. Oh, and if it's not clear already, Train is absolutely a sexist, and he panders to others who are as well. Alright, like, subscribe, check out my other videos, uh, bell, whatever, um, oh, I made a Twitter as well, go follow that, I don't really use it, but just in case, and yeah, see ya.